In this video, the Serial Peripheral Interface SPI of the ATmega328 is programmed using assembly to enable serial communication between two Arduinos. Serial Peripheral Interface is a feature found in microcontrollers that enables the interfacing of serial devices such as sensors with microcontrollers. A block diagram of the SPI network is shown here which is made of a master device which is basically a microcontroller or a microprocessor and a slave device which is uh, in most cases a peripheral device such as sensor. Serial communication between the master and the slave is achieved by using three wire communication. We have the master out slave in, master in slave out and the serial clock. The master out slave in line is used when the master device is transmitting serial data to the slave device and the master in slave out line is used when the slave is transmitting data to the master device. Now the communication between the two is full duplex it means we could have at the same time both devices communicating with each other. Shift registers are used in both devices to traverse the data between one device to another and these shift registers are powered by a clock generator that generates the clock signal needed to synchronize the communication between the two devices. The slave select signal generated by the master device is used to enable the slave device so that the slave will receive the data from the master device. The SPI inside the ATmega328 is fully programmable and has the following specs full duplex with three wire synchronous communication. We could program the SPI in either master mode or slave mode. We could either transmit the least significant bit first or the most significant bit. It has seven programmable bit rates for generating the serial clock. And there are two important flags, the end of transmission interrupt flag to indicate the end of transmission of the device and the right collision flag which is used to avoid writing to the shift register before data is uh, shifted out. SPI of the ATmega328 has three programmable registers data register, control register and status register. We start with the data register which is an 8-bit shift register and the byte to be transmitted will be copied into this register. As an example, let's say we want to transmit a byte from the master device to the slave device. So, within the master device, uh, register R17 contains the byte to be transmitted. This byte is copied into the data register using the OUT instruction. But before we can transmit the byte, first we need to enable the slave device by sending the active low slave select signal. On the receiver side, which is the slave device, the data register will have the byte. We copy it into a register using the in instruction and then we can output the byte to a port. Next we have the status register which contains the SPIF flag which is the intra flag. And this flag is set when the serial transfer is completed. And inside the uh, assembly code we can use this indefinite loop to check the status of the flag. The status register also has the right collision flag which will be set when data is written to the data register during the data transfer process. We also have this bit here. When set it will double the SPI speed of the master device. Next we have the SPI control register. This bit here will enable the intra feature of the SPI. This bit will enable the SPI itself. This bit will determine the bit movement in the data register, whether we have least significant bit first or the most significant bit first. This bit will uh, program the device either in master mode or in slave mode. These two bits, the clock polarity and the clock phase, determine the SPI mode. We have four modes, so for example, mode zero is the clock polarity will be on the rising edge while the 
change the in phase will be on the falling edge of the clock. Finally, these two bits combined with the bit in the status register will give us eight clock rates. Now, according to the data sheet, this rate is not recommended. So actually we have seven clock rates. F oscillator in our case is 16 megahertz. This block diagram shows the SPI pins on the AT Mega 328 which are available on port B from PB2 to PB5. And on the UNO side it's digital pins 10 to 13. To demonstrate SPI communication within the Arduino, we have two Arduinos, one master and one slave. The master will send a byte to the slave and the slave will display the byte on these eight LEDs connected to port D. In this demonstration, we are continuously sending the hexadecimal value AA and then its once complement, which is 55 hexadecimal. A quick look at the assembly code. We start with the SPI master. Here we are using the equate directive to define three identifiers, serial clock, MOSI, and SS with values 5, 3, and 2. A serial clock is at uh, pin uh, PB5, MOSI is PB3, and SS is PB2. First, we configure the pins MOSI, serial clock, and SS as output pins of port B. And then we program the control register so that we have uh, we enable the SPI as a master and that the serial clock is the oscillator clock divided by 16. Next we copy the byte to be transmitted into register R17 and then we enable the slave device by sending the active low SS signal. And then we copy the byte in R17 into the data register which is immediately then transmitted to the slave device. Next, we use this indefinite loop to wait for byte transmission to complete by checking the status of this flag within the status register. Once the transmission is complete, then we can send a, a high SS signal to disable the slave device. And then we apply a delay, and then we apply once complement to the byte in R17 to get the hexi value 55, and then we jump to again to repeat the transmission. And now we look at the code on the SPI slave. First we need to configure port D for output. And then we program the control register so that we enable SPI in slave mode. And then using this indefinite loop we wait for byte reception to complete. Once it is complete then we can get the byte which is in the data register and store it into register R18 and then output the byte to port D and then jump to label again and repeat the reception. In a future video, the I2C feature within the 80 Mega microcontroller will be programmed and demonstrated. Thank you for watching.